Section 18 of The Song of Hiawatha. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Peter Yearsley. The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Section 18. The Death of Kwasind. Far and wide among the nations spread the name and fame of Kwasind. No man dared to strive with Kwasind. No man could compete with Kwasind. But the mischievous Pukwudgies, they the envious little people, they the fairies and the pygmies, plotted and conspired against him. "'If this hateful Kwasind,' said they, "'if this great outrageous fellow goes on thus a little longer, tearing everything he touches, rending everything to pieces, filling all the world with wonder, what becomes of the Pukwudgies? Who will care for the Pukwudgies?' He will tread us down like mushrooms, drive us all into the water, give our bodies to be eaten by the wicked Nibanabegs, by the spirits of the water. So the angry little people all conspired against the strong man, all conspired to murder Kwasind, yes, to rid the world of Kwasind, the audacious, overbearing, heartless, haughty, dangerous Kwasind. Now this wondrous strength of Kwasind in his crown alone was seated. In his crown, too, was his weakness. There alone could he be wounded. Nowhere else could weapon pierce him. Nowhere else could weapon harm him. Even there, the only weapon that could wound him, that could slay him, was the seed-cone of the pine-tree, was the blue cone of the fir-tree. This was Kwasin's fatal secret, known to no man among mortals. But the cunning little people, the Pukwudgies, knew the secret, knew the only way to kill him. So they gathered cones together, gathered seed cones of the pine tree, gathered blue cones of the fir tree in the woods by Taquamenor, brought them to the river's margin, heaped them in great piles together, where the red rocks from the margin, jutting, overhang the river. There they lay in wait for Kwasind, the malicious little people. Twas an afternoon in summer, very hot and still the air was, very smooth the gliding river, motionless the sleeping shadows. Insects glistened in the sunshine, insects skated on the water, filled the drowsy air with buzzing, with a far resounding war-cry. Down the river came the strong man, in his birch canoe came Kwasind, floating slowly down the current of the sluggish Taquamenor very languid with the weather, very sleepy with the silence. From the overhanging branches, from the tassels of the birch-trees, soft the spirit of sleep descended, by his airy hosts surrounded, his invisible attendants, came the spirit of sleep Napawin, like a burnished Dashkwaneshi, like a dragonfly, he hovered o'er the drowsy head of Kwasind, to his ear there came a murmur as of waves upon a seashore, as of far-off tumbling waters, as of winds among the pine-trees, and he felt upon his forehead blows of little airy war-clubs, wielded by the slumbrous legions of the spirit of sleep, Napawin, as of some one breathing on him. At the first blow of their war-clubs fell a drowsiness on Kwasind, at the second blow they smote him, motionless, his paddle rested. At the third, before his vision reeled the landscape into darkness, very sound asleep was Kwasind. So he floated down the river like a blind man seated upright, floated down the Taquameno, underneath the trembling birch-trees, underneath the wooded headlands, underneath the war encampment of the pygmies, the Pukwudgies. There they stood, all armed and waiting, hurled the pine-cones down upon him, struck him on his brawny shoulders, on his crown defenceless struck him. "'Death to Kwasind!' was the sudden war-cry of the little people. And he sideways swayed and tumbled, sideways fell into the river, plunged beneath the sluggish water headlong as an otter plunges, and the birch-canoe abandoned drifted empty down the river, bottom upward, swerved and drifted, nothing more was seen of Kwasind. But the memory of the strong man lingered long among the people, 
and whenever through the forest raged and roared the wintry tempest and the branches tossed and troubled creaked and groaned and split asunder quasind cried they that is quasind he is gathering in his firewood End of section 18